and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below because we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Uh, in this video, this is the second part of our probably three-part series where we're going to talk about deflections in CSI Safe 2016. In the first part of this video, we looked at just very basic uh, linear deflections, um, very simple, not really a lot of use in terms of you know real life application. Just just getting you familiar with the program. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about crack deflections, instantaneous, which are, are much more valuable to us. So, um, and then after this video, in the third part, we're going to talk about long term cracked deflections as well. And maybe in that video, we'll cover a bit of theory. So this is the second part, and let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned. In the first video, I think this looks familiar to you. I'm going to use the same layout that we did in the first video. And uh, actually, we're going to compare our results and see kind of what the difference is, all right? So I'm going to walk you through how to define load cases for cracked instantaneous deflections in SAFE in slabs. This is, in my opinion, one of the better uses of SAFE, to be honest, is when you have a typical floor slab and you want to check deflections. The reason as well why cracked deflections are important is because um, typically the, you know, the the codes and standards that we use specify that slabs and, and beams and concrete in general should be cracked. The cracking of, of the concrete should be included in the design. And as we know, um, I'm going to leave a link down below that explains a little bit more about computing crack deflections, is that as concrete cracks, it loses eye, it loses stiffness. And as a result, it uh, deflects usually more. Anyway, let's take a look. We have our slab and we have our supports that we design that we kind of uh, laid out before. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So we're going to go to define and we're going to go to load patterns. Okay. And all I've done here is uh, in the last video, we had dead and live and we just used dead. This time I added SID. Okay. Cause we're going to separate SID. And for this case, for instantaneous deflections, it's not going to be important, but we're going to need to separate dead and SID when we do long term. So let's just do it now. Okay. So we've, um, uh, as a load pattern, we've added SID. Now let's go ahead and check out load cases. So we're going to go to load cases. Now we have our dead and our live, okay, from before. Let's add a new linear case, okay, because we're going to compare them and we're going to call it SID. So our superimposed dead load. So dead load that is not, not the weight of the slab. And now let's add three more cases for cracked deflections, um, self-weight, live, and superimposed dead load. So how we do that is we go to add new case. We're going to type in, you can add them, you can call them whatever you want. I'm going to call it live cracked. We're going to come over here to analysis type and we're going to click nonlinear cracked. Um, and actually using nonlinear cracked, we can just compute the, the coefficients to calculate long term later. So I'm going to go over that. Um, but for now, we're just going to select nonlinear cracked. So let's go here and let's click live and we're going to scale factor one. There's some other um, options here, like you can choose initial conditions. You can start it from static, so kind of a flat slab that's not deflected or loaded, or you can, you know, continue from state at end of nonlinear case. So you can load it with a load case and then apply a load after it's been loaded type thing. We're not going to do any of that here. Um, you can also do like modal analysis. We're going to just select static for now. Uplift solution control. We're just going to leave that. Uh, we're not going to look at that in this video. So let's press OK. Now there's our live cracked. Let's do the same thing for SID. Okay. And let's do the same thing for self-weight. Okay, so as we can see, we have our three linear cases and we have our three non-linear cases. So let's press okay. And now let's make sure that our loads are applied correctly. So we've applied our live load and our SID. Those are all good. Let's go ahead and press okay. And in the other video, we had a, a linear load. I believe it was three kilonewton per meter or something. So let's go ahead and reassign that as an SID now. Okay. Okay. So we have all our loads on our slab. We've um, defined our load cases. Let's go to our load combinations now. Okay. Let's just make sure. So before we just had our one dead, one live case, and let's take a look at what was in there. Um, we had, we're, we combined dead previously. So we're going to add uh, an SID as well here. Um, so this is our um, linear crack deflection total um, deflections. Um, 
So that's good. Now let's add a new combo and let's add our crack load case, okay? So we're gonna do one dead plus one live, okay? Cracked. Now let's add all of our cracked load cases in, okay? That looks good. And let's go ahead and run it now. Um, depending on the complexity and size of your model, cracked deflections are gonna take a lot longer to run. This is a very simple, small slab. This is not really uh, gonna take very long, but as you can see, the other one was instant and this one is, you know, reanalyzing. So it's it's kind of iterating and, you know, it's, it's cracking the slab and then it's deflecting more and then that's causing more cracking. So it has to do this kind of iteration um, and reanalysis over and over again when you do a cracked slab. And uh, if your slab is very large um, and complex, this can actually take quite a while. So uh, just expect that if you are running crack deflections. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so we've arrived at our uh, result here. And um, let's go ahead and let's compare. Now, one thing I do want to mention is meshing. Meshing is an interesting topic. Meshing is kind of the number of nodes and points the program has to calculate from. For now, we're just using whatever's default and safe. But typically for a slab, if you can, you want to use about the slab thickness meshing. So if you have a 200 slab, you want to do a mesh of, of 0.2 meters or something like that. And that can be found in run and in automatic slab mesh options. So right now this mesh is far too, far too high for this slab thickness. We have a 200 slab. Um, for, for the purpose of this video, it's fine. We're not really actually checking anything and I'm just showing you how to use the program. But in reality, try and have it at about um, the slab thickness here, which is actually going to increase your computational time a lot. For very standard shapes, this isn't going to make much of a difference, but when you have complicated geometry, increasing the, the mesh density is going to give you much more accurate results. So let's go ahead and just kind of compare what we have. Let's take a look at our results. So I'm going to go to the deformed shape and I'm going to go to our one dead plus one live that we had previously. Okay, so what we have is a deflection of 4.5 millimeters. So we can come over here, we can go to um, options and we're gonna go to graphics colors. You can kind of change the different kind of contour colors and stuff. You can also go to show values. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you kind of a printout of um, what your deflections are on the plan. So you don't need to like mouse over them. And if you're you know doing some kind of a report for the city um, or you're know, doing some calculation package to show your slabs deflections, so printing something like this looks a lot better than you know, these, just these colors in this graph. So um, that might be useful for the purpose of this video as well. So this is our non-cracked linear deflections. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at our non-linear, our cracked instantaneous deflections. So if we take a look at our instantaneous cracked deflections, as you're gonna see, not much of a difference in this slab because the spans aren't very long and stuff, um, but there is a difference. We're at 4.7 minimum deflection and we were at 4.5 before. So, so not a lot of change with this example, but I think you'll see as well as your spans get quite a bit longer, and we can just do a little bit of a test here with that, but I think you'll find that if you make your spans quite a bit longer, uh, you'll see a bigger difference in terms of cracking um, because the moment will increase. So just a little bit of background theory is that if your moment is greater than M cracking, you're gonna reduce your moment of inertia. If your spans are relatively small and your, all of your moments are less than M cracking, you're not gonna see much of a difference. Um, so as we can see, let's take a look at, again, our, our linear deflections are at 11.9 now at this, this elongated cantilever we created. And our crack deflections are at 15, okay? So by increasing the span's length, we drastically increase the amount of crack deflection compared to immediate deflection uh, instantaneous deflection that we have in our slab. So that's something to consider. Uh, one more thing to consider is if we come over here and we go to cracking analysis options, there's different reinforcements that we can specify now. The, the main difference between uh, reinforcement as it relates to deflections is it doesn't matter for instantaneous linear deflections, but reinforcement does matter for crack deflections. So what we can do is if we unlock the model and we go to cracking analysis options, we can specify a different type of reinforcement. So what we have checked here is that we're going to allow SAFE to design the slab, specify rebar based on its finite element design, and then it's gonna use that reinforcement when it calculates long-term deflections. Um, what we can also impose is a minimum, for example, tension reinforcement. 
So typical in slabs is, you know, 0.2%, but let's say we wanted to increase the tension reinforcement, and this is very inefficient, by the way, I don't recommend doing this, by 0 .00, like let's say 0.5%, for example, and let's say that we also have um, a compression reinforcement of 0.2%. Now we can run this, and uh, I believe this deflection over here was like 15 millimeters before, so I think you'll see a very slight difference, a, a slight improvement, but uh, it's definitely not recommended to increase reinforcement to prevent long-term deflections because it's it's very expensive solution and it's not really that effective. Um, so as you can see, we're you know we we decrease deflection by one millimeter by increasing our tension reinforcement by minimum reinforcement by quite a bit. So not the best solution, but um, sometimes I don't know if that's all you have to go on then. Uh, or that helps you know your calculation work then maybe that's something you'd like to consider okay so that's it for this video uh, i hope you enjoyed it uh, a little bit of a longer one and i know we went into a little bit of theory there but I, I just wanted to try and make it a little bit more practical because this is actually something that gets used quite a bit when analyzing slabs stuff like that in in real life just because the codes and standards require us to do it and as well it's a it's a more accurate depiction of how the slabs are going to act so all right, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. If you wanna see more safe ETABs, you let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, take care.